everybody. This is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got two of the biggest, baddest Glocks that Glock has ever made. They're both chambered in 10 millimeter. One of them is a Glock 20 Gen 4, and the other one is a Glock 40 MOS. The MOS stands for Modular Optic System. It's basically pre-milled for the installation of a red dot. So I've gotten some questions from different people, you know, especially after they watched each of the individual videos on these. Of you know, I've got I've got my money. I want to buy a 10 millimeter full size. And, but I'm kind of debating between you know, the Glock 20 and the Glock 40, so what are the primary differences? So I'm going to talk about that today, why you might pick one of these over the other, and the benefits of them. So let's start out by picking each of them up and showing that they are unloaded. Oops, got a magazine on that one, and it is unloaded. So both of these are effectively a Gen 4. The MOS series is a Gen 4. So they have the dual recoil spring assembly and the removable back strap and the RTF2 texturing that's you know, familiar with the Gen 4 series. Both of them have the same operating mechanisms as any other Glock. So they work the same. And in all reality, if you look at the frames on them closely, really the, the frame is basically the same this tunnel you see up here on the front of the barrel on the Glock 40 is actually part of the slide assembly. So it extends the frame. So they actually operate with the, with the same frame. Where the difference comes in is the barrel length and the overall slide length. And this is going to surprise you, the weight. The MOS, before you put an optic on it, is 28.15 ounces. And the 20, as you see it here unloaded, is 30.7 ounces. So the MOS gun is actually lighter. And I think they did some lightening of the slide assembly to make it cycle reliably. And in doing so, they actually lightened the overall gun. The Glock 20 is 8.03 inches from the back of the grip to the front. And the 40 is 9.49 inches, the same dimensions. So the 40 is overall a much longer gun, but they have the same exact grip height. So when you're holding on to it, they feel the same. So you grip one and you know you get a full three finger grip on it. If you install the 15 round factory magazines, which is the largest magazine that I'm aware of available for them, the magazine you know just hangs down just a hair, but it really doesn't come into the grip and even with or without the magazine you're getting a full three finger grip on either gun. Now one thing you'll find with 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter is a round that can be loaded in a wide variety of different loads. You can get uh, target loads that are almost the same, they're loaded weekly, they're almost the same as 40 Smith & Wesson, and you can get more powerful ones like the Underwood, even before you go into the plus P territory, that are actually quite hot and fairly powerful. So there's a wide variety in the specification for 10 millimeter. When you get into the hotter rounds, barrel length can actually make a difference. You know, you get that plasma ball off of the shorter barrels in the, in the 10 millimeters, and that's unburnt powder. That's powder that never actually got turned into speed on the bullet, never got turned into energy imparted to the bullet. So you are going to get higher muzzle velocities with the longer barrel in the 40. So from a hunting perspective, you're going to have you know, a, bit, a more impactful hit with the same round out of the 40. But that's one of the things that will cause something that might surprise you. You get more felt recoil with this gun, despite the fact that it's bigger. Being slightly lighter and actually imparting more of the energy into the bullet you know, with a longer barrel, the felt recoil is actually higher on this than the 20. It's not significant, but when you fire them side by side, you can feel it. You can tell the difference that with the hotter ammo, the 40 is taking full advantage of it and of course you know that energy going into the bullet there's that counter energy coming back towards you and it feels like more flip and normally when you've got a bigger gun a bigger gun has less felt recoil because it absorbs the recoil just the, the sheer size of it there is about a hundred ish dollar difference between the two of them the Glock 20 retails for around 590 and you'll find it up and down you know give or take from that the Glock 40 retails for $699, and so there's, a, there's a, you know, about a, a $100 difference between the two of them. What that $100 is buying you besides the extended barrel length is the MOS capability, the modular optic system. There's a plate that's not here on this because I do have an optic on it. This is a Burst Fast Fire 3, 
but there's a plate that would cover this area. And when you take that plate off, if you can then put the optic of your choice on. If you don't take the plate off, then you can just use the regular sights. Now you'll notice that the standard sights that come with this with pretty much any optic won't co-witness. You would have to go to suppressor height sights if you want co-witness capability with the optic and the sights. You know, when I bring, this, bring it up into view, the front sight simply disappears hidden behind the optic. But the, the advantage of this plate system, it comes with the plates and the mounting hardware, is pretty much every major optic on the market you can simply mount without having to have any machine work, milling work, or anything like that done. And if you've got the MOS system, it's probably worth considering that you're, and you're intending to put an optic on it when you go with that system. That's part of what you're paying the extra money for. If you do intend to stay with just the factory sites and you don't need every single ounce of power out of that bullet that you can get, then the Glock 20 would actually serve you quite well at a reduced price and a reduced overall footprint. The Glock 20 would make a good carry weapon. You can conceal carry this inside the waistband or, or outside the waistband if you're lucky enough to be in an open carry state. And it's not too heavy or bulky for that. It is a little bit too bulky for pocket carry. This has kind of crossed the line in that it is a waistband carry gun. The Glock 40 really is not an inside the waistband gun. It's just too big for that. Not to say you couldn't, but especially if you get an optic on it, you know, that optic is going to be biting into your body. So this is a hunting gun outside the waistband, you know, uh, things like that. And I sure wouldn't want to have this as an appendix carry gun. That would probably draw some undesired looks at you. So when you're looking at the purpose behind these, competition, hunting, outside the waistband. Hunting, you could compete with this uh, inside the waistband. So they kind of give you, you know, the two different models for use. Uh, of course, with the power of the 10 millimeter round, this is also good for a bad guy that's hiding behind the refrigerator. This is good for a bad guy hiding behind the refrigerator in the neighbor's house across the street. So you've really got two different guns that serve two different purposes that do overlap some. Of course, you can see how we solved the dilemma. We just bought them both. So if, you want, if you're looking at these guns, either one of these will serve you well. If you're going to be using it for some serious hunting, definitely go with this, throw an optic on it, and this will take, definitely take care of a bear and would really give a, 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 a black bear a bad day and definitely take care of a hog. And this would accomplish the same thing. So if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, and have a great day. Thank you.